We deal with a lot of people in politics who are upsetting. Okay, that's that's not new. But there are different categories of people and their dishonesty comes in different forms. And I think sometimes people genuinely believe an ideology and then justify their dishonesty because of that ideology they believe being in the best interest of the uh, country, for example, or at least their experience in the country. So you'll have people, I would put Sean Hannity in this category, who is factually inaccurate constantly, but justifies it in his head because he's genuinely a right winger. Okay. And that's upsetting. I'm somehow even more upset by people who aren't even ideologically dedicated to something and they just flop around they can just blow around in the wind depending on what's best for their career and they're dishonest not just in their analysis of events but also in their actual values to try to just fit a mold that's beneficial for their career this is often described as as grifting and i've said to you all before and this is getting, by the way, to a Bill Maher interview with Dave Rubin, Dave Rubin's who I'm referring to. This is something I rarely accuse people of. I think I've mainly only used this to describe Dave Rubin and maybe a couple of other people because I think usually we should try to assume people are coming at this not necessarily in complete good faith, but at least in good faith about where they generally stand ideologically. And just questioning everyone's intentions gets a little bit icky. But... Dave Rubin has shown throughout his career arc such, such evidence that would compel, I think, any rational observer to say his move all the way from progressive to MAGA has been one just desperately trying to stay relevant and seek career advancements. So with that in mind, I want to cover a conversation between Bill Maher and Dave Rubin. And This is a part of where they're sitting in the club random studio that Bill Maher has. And so it's more casual. They're drinking. They're smoking. But in this more casual environment, you still have Bill Maher repeatedly (laughs) roasting Dave Rubin about things as lighthearted as him holding his joint the wrong way. Or not even holding it. Lighting the wrong end of it completely. All the way to the threat that's posed by the MAGA ideology, something that Dave Rubin bolsters, and then also Dave Rubin's perpetuating of DeSantis talking points and the absurdity of that. So a lot to look at here. Be patient with me as we go through because I have a lot to say about these clips. The first one gets to how I introduced this with, I think, Dave Rubin seeing a lot of this, even though he's talking about other people, as show business instead of a genuine discussion of meaningful, impactful policy issues. How how much of this do you think is just there's no business like show business? Like how much of it is just the show at this point more than like... What do you mean? Well, that it's just like every day we just wake up and there's just like another episode of the show of democracy. Like, yeah, that's why I'm saying like we need new characters. Yeah, we just like we, but, I mean, but like in a literal democracy sense. Democracy like, is real. Yeah. It's just that the people in the country don't prize it, including people like you. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and could you vote for someone that has dementia? Uh, or, and I'll play more of this in a second here. But again, he's talking about other people, the politicians. It's just a show democracy just the sort of the show of democracy and i really encourage all of you it's easy to sometimes let it become that one thing that biden has been saying as he tries to encourage people to stay supportive of him despite all the concerns has been and i think this is a very true statement politics isn't reality tv i don't think that fully answers the broader discussion happening about biden but separate from that just focusing on that phrase Politics is not supposed to be a reality TV show, and we make it that, and I think that can can deceive us. It can make us believe that our focus should be on things that it shouldn't. Our focus should surround these personalities, and that's how you get this personality cult around Trump. Instead of really tapping into daily the importance of the policies we're discussing discussing the millions of lives that are impacted on a daily basis by our incredibly powerful political system matters of life and death 
food on the table, people's wages, etc. right? So this is really important stuff. And I encourage all of you to not take that sort of approach. Gosh, it just feels like a show. What's going to happen with these characters, real people being impacted, which is why we need to care and not detach. Here's Bill Maher addressing the dementia talking point. Or Parkinson's or he, some absolutely, combination because, thereof? No, because let's be honest, let's be clear about Biden. Uh, should he run for president? No, as we were saying, I was saying a long time yeah. ago, he shouldn't. Um, is he the best choice? No. Is he completely out of his mind? No. He's not lost his marbles. Uh, I wouldn't ask him something at 1130 at night. No. But if you had to, is he completely crazy? No. If some shit happened, not so like... sure about the end Oh, of that. please. That's, that's so sure. You know, you talk yourself into the extremes. Yeah. I don't know that that's extreme. I don't have any sense that so, he has the wherewithal if they woke him up at 730, 1130, or 330 that he would know well, where he is then or you're, what then he's you're doing. just a hater he's not he's he's terrible in public he's terrible when you put him under pressure with his stuttering and with his age yes to try to do a debate it would be like asking him to run a marathon at 81 no you can't do that but can he sit in a chair and still think clearly and talk yes to to think not is just just again being pointlessly purposely stupidly extreme about it not being objective you just hate that side so you can't come to the actual troop well, place like so, where this is and I, that's where this is i like some if, evidence if, if, of it when's the last time if you russia saw attacked that? Yeah. between 9 and 3 yeah but <laughs> yeah, exactly thank you no but if yeah <laughs> obviously a joke at the end there yeah and i think different people have different takes on the severity how much are you compelled by the uh, private testimony of biden's ability to handle the situations super effectively the results have been incredible in his governance but then you do have these communication struggles that make a lot of people feel like there's more than just a communication struggle, and it should be cause for concern and governance ability. So the point Bill Maher is making, I think, is is a good one wherever you fall across a spectrum of observations and, and views on this, which is let's not talk ourselves into these wildly extreme opinions because I have seen this as well. I mentioned in, in a different segment. I've been totally here for, and I think it's a reasonable discussion to have, especially within the pro-democracy movement, trying to exclude from that conversation MAGA folks exploiting this moment, but instead within our own walls have this discussion about the best path forward for the pro-democracy movement in defeating Trump. All that's fine. Competency discussions, fine. And also, people have then taken it way too far doing the whole, he doesn't know where he is, he doesn't know Jill Biden's his wife, and that type of stuff just sort of needlessly makes the conversation far more severe and detached from a reasonable reality-based discussion, and that is not helpful to anyone. If you appreciate this show and want to, in the easiest, freest way possible, support the work that we're doing, clicking that subscribe button makes a huge difference. Back to the video. Here's more. He, he doesn't scare me as there's this crazy, you know, mental incapacitate in office. And you don't really believe that either. No, I do. I know. I do. But I don't think that's bubble or anything else. But I you think were afraid to Santa's. Look I, how that turned out. Well, I, you get pred pred predictions wrong, but right, right. now, if, but listen. If DeSantis, well, I don't want to be DeSantis. Let's let's not let, let's not do that. Would I you, wouldn't either if I were you. You ever get calls from? Uh, and then on to the next topic. <laughs> so roasting him on the outcome of DeSantis and Ruben was a big. DeSantis is gonna win. He's gonna be the nominee. He's my guy, sort of person. And I will say, a lot of people predicted this, but. I think you fundamentally misunderstood the characteristics that originally yielded Trump within the Republican base if you thought it wasn't going to yield Trump again this time around. Because those conditions, as I've been telling you all for some time now, remain. Even if Trump just for some reason said, I'm not going to be the nominee, or if he loses this time around and becomes politically irrelevant, please 
there will still be those underlying conditions, those characteristics of this population and this movement that gave Trump even the opportunity to exploit those things and gave him the opportunity to rise to power and and prominence. And so that's going to stay the same. And that's why we need to have a more systemic approach to understanding how we get through this frightening time. And people who thought, oh, after Trump lost in 2020, he's just going to vanish. MAGA is just going to chill out. It's going to be the normal Republican Party again. And you're going to have any other candidate than Trump become the nominee. Again, I think misunderstood the moment. Here's more. Wonderful. No, uh, no, but I don't think I, I don't think there would be a massive if I was trying to find it. And that's what I've been trying to explain to people, that the difference between, well, say, a Bill Maher liberal and whatever it is I am at this point, may be a voting decision, but it's actually not much in terms of what, what, a, what we I, would I, want I, this I, country I, to look like. I hate to be a broken record, but I got to go back to the conceding elections is kind of a big one. No, so that's a big, voting. Big that's one. a voting thing. Like, I just think he's the only chance at this point to reset any of the bullshit. And, and you know, I didn't even support him during the primary. So it's not like, um, right. you know, some like MAGA hat wearing, like right. he can do no wrong, you know. By the way, tell your boyfriend in Florida. Yes. That, um, like, for Mr. Small Government. Yeah. What do, what do you want? To be like telling people like what colors they can make their bridge and telling strippers well, that they, you know, I don't know if people know this, but he just raised the age you could be a stripper from 18 to 21. Do you know this? I didn't know that. I haven't been to a strip club in a while. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, good talk. <laughs> so I want to reference the bridge thing, then get back to the first part of that clip. And then I have, let's see, one, one more clip for you after that. MSNBC reports the administration of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, America's premier anti-woke warrior, seems to have set its sights on a new target. Color displays on Florida's bridges as a part of DeSantis's Freedom Summer initiative. The state's transportation secretary, J uh, Jared W. Purdue, announced earlier this month that bridges in the state will have no choice but to be illuminated red, white, and blue from Memorial Day through Labor Day. This was... Uh, an effort to bar any bridge from carrying rainbow colors for Pride Month or any other colors to commemorate uh, other occasions. So, as I've said many times, you can't find someone, and I say this in sort of a silly tone of voice, even though I genuinely mean it, who actually does value more than me patriotic uh, symbolism. I love it, okay? Red, white, and blue, the heck out of those bridges. But... This effort to specifically require bridges to not, because that's what it was about, because it was an anti-woke thing, to not do Rainbow for Pride Month because of this weird obsession with opposing LGBTQ advocacy, that is a sort of a contradiction, as Bill Maher was pointing out, with the small government, let people do what they want to do thing, and also just a strange, obsessive tendency we're seeing from these folks to attack, attack, attack what is not harmful at all, and what is actually a beautiful message, which is we should all love one another and uh, respect one another's ability to live in the way that they choose. Here's a little bit more of that conversation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really sticking in that, that so that's the fundamental difference it's saving democracy well, on one hand and also you want 18 year old strippers I'm, i respect it you know i'm just I mean? saying for somebody who's like small government yeah um to be doing things like that yeah well it wasn't that you can't paint the bridge with everyone he just didn't want rainbow flags or rainbow colored bridges. but shouldn't we be no but we should free want to paint the not paint the bridge just light the bridge any colors we want i mean what i mean to well, take well, the bait on that is just so well, ridiculous it's just, i think people have just had enough of all of that people, i've had enough of that pe people hate all of the pride yeah, bullshit but, and but nonsense let them hate it is it but again well i think he it, said it can it, only be lit up red white and blue or something if they're going to do lights like, is i it, don't have a problem is with it that. like is it government's job yep. right so it goes on but i actually do have one Additional. That was just an extension of the last clip. But yeah, <laughs> Dave Rubin, stop. Stop it. 
most people are not sick of the pride BS, as he put it. If we could have a more united, less hostile environment in the country, I think people of all different backgrounds could understand, as I said, the beauty of celebrating one's ability to be who they are, to identify the way that they choose, to love the people that they choose. And this doesn't, hasn't, uh, doesn't have to become such a contentious and divisive and exploited issue as we see from MAGA media. Then you have this. Yeah. yeah, wait, who's Andy Bashir? Exactly. Oh. You don't even know? Oh, I th- no. You lit the wrong end, you fucking nerd. Is something not right here? <laughs> something seems... Oh, my God. Wow. What a... Lo- That's called comedy, my friend. That's called loser. That's, co- what, That's called being what, what, a loser. What joint is this? It's the thickest... It's the, con- it's the kind where it's obvious yeah, that right. this Let is the end, hear- and this is the part you light. This is... Oh, my God. That's the end? It seemed a little wow. tough to inhale. <laughs> I don't know. You smoke a lot of weed. I thought you rap. Okay, so that was just a funny bonus clip. And I, I don't mean to be, if you don't know who Dave Rubin is, so rude up front. If you have seen his career trajectory, I think you would understand where I'm coming from. Because I think something that hurts our political dialogue more than anything is grifters. It is, I can work with someone who's misinformed on facts or maybe i find out i'm misinformed on certain things and we can have that research together to make sure that we're aligned with the facts we can grapple with ideological differences differences in values as long as we can unite around our dedication to democracy which was the first part of the clip i forgot to get back to where bill maher says uh you and i aren't actually really similar because you don't have that dedication to our democratic process as shown by your support of Trump, someone who refuses to concede elections and try to hold on to power despite losing. But if we could get to a place, and this is why focusing so much on opposing MAG is important in this moment, but if we could get to a place where we did have that common dedication to our democratic process and respect of our institutions and our constitutional process, then we can have the debates, the dialogue. One thing that does hinder that, though, are people who misrepresent themselves in the interest of fame, career advancements. And I do put Dave Rubin into that category based on what we've observed over the years. Uh, Because then it's impossible to have a productive conversation because you're not actually having any sort of meaningful conversation because they're not here to give you an honest assessment of what they believe and then receive honestly the information that you're delivering. And so that's my, that's my beef with, with Dave Rubin, but a uh, really interesting conversation there. Let me know what you thought of that in the comments. If you want to get extra content daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.